Claude Bowers here with you from Super Channel 55 Studios. Welcome to the program. And looking forward to this time with you, our viewers, and wherever you might be watching or whenever you might be watching. And our guest here in the studio with us, uh, here to share with you a perspective on current events and a great church and work going on in Central Florida, a long history of success and the leaders of that great church, uh, Jump Ministries Global Church in Orlando, are here with us today. And so we'll just see where this goes and we can spend some time together. Um, thank you for your support of the station and for your prayers and opportunity that we have to pray for you as viewers. And from time to time, there'll be a prayer line number up. And um, the mail that we get, I just wanted to share with you some of the cities that um, have responded. And uh, as we go into now the fourth, you know, fourth decade of broadcasting since we started here on this channel and initiated it when there were chicks, what, six cable channels on cable system at that time. We were number seven. So a long time. God has been good. And we've, over the years, had some great programmers that's been accumulating. Uh, some of them been with us for 30 years. And um, so our guest today have been with us a long time. And it's just a tremendous testimony to them and their work that they're doing. And so they'll give you some perspective from that uh, direction. Dr. Steve Ingram here with us. Yes, sir. It's always a delight to be here and find out what's going on in our neighborhood, you know. Yeah. So many works of God are going and haven't quit, haven't shut their doors, and it's great to have these folks. We've known each other since Daytona days, years ago. Yeah. He's really a fireball of God, I tell you what. Yeah. <laughs> Even if your wood's wet, he'll get you on fire. <laughs> uh, and Lady Fong as well. It's what a, what a, yeah. what a blessing it is. Uh, Steve, you're a pastor, and you've been located here in Altamont, uh, uptown Altamont, for seven years. Yeah. You've gone through this little transition of the be weeks, and uh, so you're smiling and coming out <laughs> the other side. Well, the kingdom has not changed. The dynamics of how we do kingdom work has been a little bit daunted, but honestly, Brother Claude, uh, we've just seen growth in other areas. We, uh, you know, a year or two ago bought cameras and set ourselves up to do it. So when this happened, it wasn't like, okay, we're, we went online immediately as much as we could. We've gotten folks from uh, down in Nigeria, New York, uh, Bahamas, different places that have suddenly found us and we're the best friend on TV right now. So <laughs> we're doing well. We're open. We never shut our doors. It did minimize uh, in terms of uh, people, but our crew was there. They were willing to work, and uh, I think that's the way the kingdom works. You know, when there's trouble, hurricanes, or whatever, you keep going. You you don't quit. How would you describe your ministry? You and Cheryl, and your connection with the Copeland family, and and the Word of Faith Ministries, and. Uh, this is, you've had a chance to put faith to work in the last few years. Oh. Well, I tell you one thing that happened to me early on when I went to work with Brother Copeland. We had been at CBN with Pat Robertson, who you know well. Yeah. Uh, and we went to work for Kenneth, and he just taught us how to get our mouth right. And that's part of Christian's problem. If they go around saying, well, we don't know what we're going to do. This pandemic thing is, you know, fear is not of God. Faith is of God. That's why I love what you do when you come on the air. You bring faith back into the element of what, how God does what he does. My friend Charles Kapp said years ago, if you want the dog, don't call the cat. So we just, we just keep calling uh, increase and, and joy to people, you know. Yeah. And we've had some that were devastated in terms of uh, lost their jobs. But uh, they're tithers and givers, so we just reminded them their tithe seed is still coming up. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Uh, yeah, you know, we're learning that our words are first creative and then communicate. Yes. You, you create and then you communicate with your words. God made uh, Adam, Eve, he gave them authority in the earth. And um, the word of our mouth is important. The, f the phrases we use, even the slang words that some often use, uh, just each, each word is, is pregnant with positive or negative potential. Every word. And um, so is the word of God. Jesus says, my words, they are spirit and yes. they are life. So when you just read the words of Jesus, you're doing a spiritual thing. 
and uh, there's, there's, there's a, a manna that comes, even when you might not feel it or connected. And we have a book here called Jesus Speaks. I hope oh, you'll get yes. it. It's a devotional. And every word yeah, that Jesus yeah. spoke on, 120 different topics. So if you don't have that, those books, call and uh, get, your, get a copy of those books. Just reading the words of Jesus. And then you take it and break it down on the 120 different topics. Everything Jesus said on that subject. I wish I had a book to show. <laughs> but we'll get into that. I do have some letters here. Uh, All right. Just envelopes I'd like to mention. Some of you are new to the program and the station. And it gives you a little perspective. So our, our coverage is expanding. We've just turned on our brand new Channel 32 station in Gainesville. We've been on Gainesville for many years on cable, Channel 57. And we had a station there in the past. And through the FCC uh, spectrum process has been going on now for three years, which is finished now, we were able to get a new license and a new station, all new station that today, in fact, went to full power. So we channeled 32 in Gainesville. Oh, yeah. And so we, we cover the, you know, uh, the University of Florida, University of Central Florida, some major campuses, and it's just a great market to be in. And this is evidenced by the mail we get. This comes in from Wildwood. All from right. Bruce Avenue and uh, Altamont Springs. I refer to it as Uptown Altamont. And Candler, you know where Candler, Florida is? I don't yet. Candler <laughs> is a very industrious city up near Ocala, near Bellevue. A lot of foundry and minist uh, uh, manufacturing in there. And uh, great people up there who support the station. Ocala, Ocala per capita is the strongest city of support we've had over the years. It's just tremendous. Kissimmee, Davie, Florida. That's, I believe, outside of uh, Tampa. We have a channel in Tampa now on the air. Palm Bay, Port, Port Orange, Sanford, of course. Just keep going here. West Melbourne. Our signal goes down to Barefoot Bay on the, on the east coast of Florida. And uh, Ocala is another one. Orlando. Okoy. When Freddie and I first came to Central Florida, we lived on Blueford Avenue in Okoy, and that, that's a great little city. It's now becoming a major city of, of growth, and uh, so we have a lot of viewers in support in Winter Garden and Okoy. My brother, I came here. It was amazing. I uh, come in, guys. Let me talk just more. I I, uh, I I got saved. I was working for a communications company in Tallahassee, Florida. And I really got saved. I got born again at a church altar on a Sunday night. Living in a college town, going to a tech school there. And um, I really fell in love with the Lord. And so the, the company I was working for, which is a big telephone company at the time, said, we're going to promote you, but you have to work on Sunday. And as a new believer, I, I'm not making judgment here, but for me, that was not, a, that was not, uh, that was not something I wanted to do. And when I got saved, I went to church uh, on Wednesday night to an Assembly of God church and Thursday night to a Pentecostal Holiness church and Freedom's church on the weekend. And uh, so I was, in, I was in church. I mean, I really got a touch of God, and I'm so grateful for that heritage. And so one, week, one holiday, my mother-in-law said, why don't you guys go, to, go down and visit with your brother in Winter Garden? It'd be a nice thing to do on New Year's uh, Day. In fact, I think it was the second year of the Super Bowl when we came down and visited my brother, who was like Mr. Appliance in Central Florida. <laughs> you know, they talk about the appliance, the appliance you know, guy. Yeah. Appliance? Uh, well, he was Mr. Appliance. Wow. He had a new store in Okoy. I don't know why I'm going here, but some of you will identify. He had a brand new furniture and appliance store in Winter Garden. And he had a used store in Okoy by a different name. And so if you bought in Winter Garden, and got upset with that deal, you just go to Okoy and buy from him again <laughs> under a different name. Different name. And he, he just became so prosperous. And, uh, but I came here to work. And um, one day a man came in from the phone company and said, uh, he talked to me, he bought some furniture from us. He asked me what I did and I told him. He, and he, I said, I used to work for the telephone industry. And he said, so he sent a recruiter over and I got hired with uh, Florida Telephone. And watch this now. And worked a few years. They promoted me to Leesburg, which was the headquarters uh, of what is now Sprint Telephone. And I uh, worked there. And uh, found out while I was there, I, the Lord had really called me into uh, uh, full-time ministry, but I didn't know exactly where and how. So I prayed and fasted. 
And uh, one day in Leesburg, I found out that there was a Christian, not a Christian, but a TV channel available. And so I felt connected to that. I talked to Pat Robertson, and I said, Pat, you know, we'd like to get your programming on. And so that was really the genesis of this station. But I think about how the Lord carried us to Leesburg, Florida. So Okoy, Winter Garden, Leesburg, and uh, back to Altamont Springs. And so it's just been a wonderful journey of faith and uh, how you uh, stood with us over the years, many of you watching this station and supporting Super Channel 55. So thanks for your support. Just a few more. Of course, another one from Ocala, Deltona, Anderson, South Carolina. A lot of people visit here and write us when they get back home. Lakeland and Ocala again. So we've got wonderful guests today. Steve, can yes. you give us a little uh, music here to bring our guests up? And let's get going with uh, some great pastors right here in Central Florida in Orlando. Come on up. Dr. Hepburn and Lady Fong. might not be six feet apart, but we're, <laughs> we're four, three or four feet apart. We're fine. Oh, welcome to the set. It's always a pleasure to be with you, Mr. Oh, Bowles. Oh people know you from television and from yes. so many other uh, important outreaches that you have here. Tell us, enter, first of all, let's start with the, Dr. Hepburn. You started in uh, up in the Daytona area. Yes, in New Smyrna Beach. How did you come to know Christ? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Ten seconds. I came to know Christ at age 11 from television. So that's the power of media ministry. From television, I was in my bed, and this gentleman was preaching about Christ and how he died and suffered, and I wanted to know this Christ, and then he said, you have to repent of all your sins. And I started to repent of every sin I could remember. I thought you had to name every sin one by one. I was 11. <laughs> Nobody was around. So I started to say, God, forgive me for stealing the change out of my mother's purse. Forgive me for taking the cookies out of the cookie jar. And I couldn't remember everything, and I thought if you couldn't remember everything, he wouldn't forgive you. So I was just crying, and I said, Jesus, come into my heart. So mm -hmm. at age 11. At 14, I understood better what salvation was all about. Mm -hmm. Wow. Oh, what a, see that? Wow. Well, I didn't I never, know that. Yeah. I would never have known that. Introduce yourself to our viewers and tell us how you came to know this. Wow, okay. Christ was well, I am originally from Vietnam. I was born in Vietnam, came here, and I was yay high with my family. So that's a story in its own um, but I became a born-again Christian at a later age in my life, went through some, a few things. I come from a Buddhist background, grew up in that strong culture, so a lot of it has to do with tr tradition and culture and everything, so I was raised with that. What is Buddhism? Worshiping dead, dead ancestors. So that was where I came from. So at a later age in life, a lot of things happened. I was invited by my sister, who I didn't really know was already a born-again Christian, because we already living our own separate lives. She just invited me to church one day and things were happening. I said, you know what, let me just go with you. I don't even know what church is. Never been around church. Didn't have no Christian friend and went to church August 2007. This church she took me to, I had no idea what it was. It was just somewhere, a neighborhood that I did not, was not familiar with. And there I was at Jump Ministries. <laughs> First church I ever attended to and this pastor came down, wore this beautiful robe, and I'm like, wow, this is like really, you know, the praise and worship team, they had steppers, they had, it was amazing. So that was the beginning, August 2007, about a year or so later, it turned out, the pastor became my husband. <laughs> so that, I guess that kind of sums it up. But it was an experience, and, and, and seeing the people uh, at church and experiencing the love of Christ, hands-on, personal experience for me. So, yeah, yeah. You were kind of the 11. you were kind of the uh, <laughs> rudder in your family as far as the the, the religion, right? That you grew I up in. I was, I was, I, I I was pretty head headstrong. I was yeah. very dedicated, and, and and that's very common in, in the at least for I, I, for me in the Asian culture. Very yeah. dedicated, very loyal to our culture, to our family. Um, loyalty is everything, and just dedication to to the family and what we did. Was, was more than anything. So it wasn't even a God, per se. It was more a, 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 a dedication and loyalty to the family. Yeah. And I was, yes, I was the one that made sure everything was done in order. We celebrated what we needed to celebrate, set up the altar, the incense, the feeding, all that. Yeah. 
And this is the pastor, huh? <laughs> apparently. Yeah. Apparently, that is you, who God. Well, I'll tell you, Dr. Hepburn, you are, you are both of you, but you are one of the most determined people yes. I've ever met. <laughs> you just keep going. Yes. Yes, I commend you. Yes, yes. Yes. I tell you, yes, you always say that. Yes. Yes. Global Church, you've already got a global church. <laughs> I mean, it was like it yes. was like from the beginning, that yes. was your vision. Yes, yes. And now you are a major broadcaster. You're on the station four or five times a week. Yes, yes. You have your own channel in Tampa. That's right. We are able to work together on that and you're channeling Gainesville uh, yes. and you have your production team right in your church Yes. and God has blessed you at your location in Orlando and yes. you're doing a lot of outreach programs but a just, for outreach. those who don't know introduce yourself and your ministry to them. Well I'm Dr. Ron Hepburn, Jump Ministries Global Church mm -hmm. and we've been, we, I, I always celebrate that we are probably the longest pastor on your station yeah. <laughs> so God has really been faithful yeah. there and like you said we just being persistent. Somebody once says, persistence wears out resistance. Mm -hmm. So God has really allowed me to be persistent in ministry and see the birth. I would tell everybody, you know, the Bible says seed, time, and harvest. And we are definitely yes. experiencing the harvest and the blessings of God because of faithfulness. So we're excited about that. Yeah, talk about the scope of your work. First of all, your theme verse for your ministry. Yes, is Romans. Your, yeah. <laughs> every presentation I watched. Well, you. when we started in New Smyrna, we used to just basically, it used to be a lot of young people. And we used to call ourselves the Youth Jump. Youth Jump. And I just. J-U-M-P. J-U-M-P. And, and the Lord just began to deal with me. And I said, you know what? Joyously mm -hmm. unveiling the master's plan. There you go. Joyously mm -hmm. unveiling the master's plan. And the scripture that came to me with that was Romans 8 and 19, where it says creation waits in eager expectation for the sons of God to be revealed. And the Lord just began to bless and enhance, and, and we begin to see growth. So jump as, and then the Lord spoke to me, believe it or not, audibly, and said to me, time to move. This was after 12 years. He said, time to move. And I was like, Satan, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. <laughs> because I was thinking in my mind, to move means to start all over again from scratch. But when we moved to Orlando, about 99% of the congregation moved with me. And everybody got better jobs, better homes, got promoted on their jobs. And God just began to bless and enhance. And he said, at the time, he said, change your name from international to global. And he said, I'm going to give you two of the best of everything. And believe it or not, we're now seeing the fruit of the best come forth. God is sending us NBA players and the doors are opening. So he's really faithful to his word. You have your own studio. You you got your own TV station. Yes, yeah. that's right. That's right. The whole network. Yeah. God it's has blessed us with you know with, with you being such yeah. a blessing. We have the network here in Orlando, JGN TV, Channel 55, that's 10. Right. Also with inside of, of Tampa and Gain and now Gainesville. Yeah. So we're just expanding and growing, and people are coming as a result of watching the JGN. Yeah, and I know personally you're a strong, motivated person. Yes. But through the through the tough times, what what keeps you going? With, with vigor and enthusiasm and just, excitement, just, always. Just believing God, just believing God. And for me, as a little boy, I develop a relationship with God. I learned how to pray early. I learned how to, to not run to my mother or father because they were not in the faith. So for me, prayer was something that I always run to early. So it was really developing a relationship with Christ and getting to know him at an early age. So this was something, determination was in me from the very beginning and Christ is real to me. It's an intimate relationship. So every, every, I seek him for direction, answers, it's personal. And the two children, beautiful children you have, wow. Yes, yes, they're five and seven now. Yes, Praise God. speaking four more. different languages. Yes, wow. we are. Yeah, we, we started them early. We, we you know, we, we wanted to bring diversity and culture into their into their life. So they, they're speaking Spanish, Mandarin, French, and of course, um, I try to teach them Vietnamese as well. So, but they're doing well. We are at home, like everybody else. 24-7 homeschooling right now, distance learning. So we have a very, very full house, very busy schedule like everyone else right now. But God has been good. Yeah, being from the Bahamas and that whole area, you know, yes. you, you, you and I have gone through some hurricanes together. Oh, yes. The one, uh, yes. I have this picture here when uh, I forget which hurricane it was five, five or six years ago. That's right. But I we, we prayed. Yes. And uh, if we get a close-up, let me show you a close-up. I want to show you. It's interesting to me. I get I keep this in my desk all the time because I remember yeah. at 5:30 in an afternoon, the hurricane was headed for um, uh, uh, what's just north of Miami there, Port Lauderdale, West Palm, West, West Palm. Palm, West Palm, yes. And 
you know, it was going to go right up the middle of Florida. I and um, 5.30, my staff and I started to go home on a Friday, I think it was. And I said, let's pray. And let's just pray. And I, I couldn't figure out what to pray. How do you speak to a hurricane? What do you say? And I, and I said, in Jesus' name, I said, go east. Yeah. Go east. Mm-hmm. And I spoke the name of the hurricane. I said, just go east. east. I knew east would get away from land. That's right. <laughs> and, I, you know, I said, go east. Go east. And so we all went home, and I told them, I said, you know, we'll, we'll, I'll call you over the weekend, and we'll see where we go to from here. But I had you on right after that. Yes, right and after I, that. And this, I this picture that. reminds me. Let me show you a close-up of this picture here. I want you to watch what God did at 5.30 on, a, I believe, a Friday afternoon. Not only us. There were people all over the world praying. Um, but I, I, got a, I got a little evidence here yes. of something happened. And it happened by nine o'clock that night. Yes. Mm-hmm. The, the, it began to move east a east. little bit. They didn't say east. They said it's going, uh, you it's know, great. shifting horizontal uh, position and all. But this is it. You can you can see it right here. It was a map. It's kind of subtle. But right here, you see that jog. It yeah. was called the jog. It was headed right here, okay. And just that little jog right there moved it east. There's the east movement right there, just a little jog. You see that jog it, from the coastline? Well, that directed it up the coast off of the state of Florida. Even the winds will be little in. jog. That's right. Right there at the bottom of that picture. It's about a 50-mile jog That's in right. real reality. But I just thought about that. Yes, yes, yes. How that uh, God gives us the power and faith, and um, a lot of people praying made a difference. It probably saved the peninsula of Florida, but uh, jump global church yes. and your outreach programs talk to us about yes that. Man, God you got really, a lot of things we do the, we do something that's called the global food festival where we have we are we are a church probably about 15 different nations are inside of jump different cultures and we decided one day hey let's have a global food fest not knowing how it would turn out and we had every nation in the church cook the best of their cuisine say it again wow. every wow. nation inside of the church cook the best of their cuisines. Like Lady Hepper and her nation, they cook, what, you had pepper steak? No, we had, well, Vietnamese food and Chinese, but we had the whole roast pork. We right. ordered the 25 pounds pork. We duck. had Jamaican yeah, curry. We had, we had bohemian fried fish. So it was the best of every nation. And we, 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 we went out and we did it, and the community just turned out in the thousands. We had probably almost 5,000 persons come. So it exploded. And when we saw it exploded, you know, we said, let's try and go to the Bahamas. And it exploded in the Bahamas. Somebody saw us in the Bahamas, you gotta bring this yeah, to Jamaica. And when we went to Jamaica, yeah. it more than exploded in Jamaica. <laughs> so with the Global Food Fest, and then the Lord began to give us Project Life. Project Life was birthed out of that. So Project Life is a nonprofit organization, of course, and we we meet the needs. We talk about the hurricane, anybody that was hit or went through something tragic, we try to feed or clothe whatever supplies we can bring to help meet the needs of the community. We Project Life helps us to do that, which is which is a part of Jump Ministries, birthed by Jump Ministries Global Church. Tell us the number of uh, meals you served in the recent oh, weeks. Oh, yes, right up, up to present day, we probably fed now close to 10,000 meals and counting because wow. every Friday we give away boxes of food for families. So we have boxes and we put enough food in there where a family can eat for one week. You know, they said the unemployment rate is very high. A lot of people are, are out of jobs and communities are hurting. But the Lord helped us right there in the heart of Central Florida where we're able to meet needs and a lot of kids who were out of school didn't have lunch. So we're able to provide hot meals, breakfast and lunch for them. And we deliver and we also have grab and go. So we're respecting all the CDC laws <laughs> where they can come and grab and go wearing their mask and sign it, everybody's staying safe. But we are, we're celebrating over 10,000 meals that we're serving up to date and counting. Yeah. I thought about your strategy uh, when we run the promotion for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was for uh, it was for school children under the age of eighteen. Right? Yes, absolutely. And I was interested how you, fo- you focused on uh, up to eighteen. Yes, yes. Uh, so how did that work out? <laughs> <It's>, it, <laughs> yeah. what, what happens is we have we when we go into the community we feed the kids. A lot of the families come out too, so we make sure we take enough for the families that yeah. they come. Yeah. 
And they just drive through and grab and go. They just grab and go, but we also have a, a set community that we deliver the food to. So you will have maybe about maybe 100, 150 families that would be there, and they, all of them get hot meals every day, Monday through Friday. We don't do it on the weekends, but every Friday besides the hot meal, we also give the boxes for groceries for one week. And then you went to the Bahamas after certain hurricanes yes, yes, came yes. through and everything and spent time there as well. Yes, but this recent hurricane that just Dorian. happened, Dorian, mm -hmm. that just happened, we were getting ready to go and take another trailer because we were sending a 40-foot trailer we sent, also pallets of food we were sending to help the victims. And when we were getting ready to send another trailer was when the pandemic happened right here locally. So they closed there. So we were not able to do that, so we focused on Central Florida. So a lot of the supplies we had, we were getting ready to ship, we were able, God had it so stored up that we were able to help the families here locally. So it worked out, all things worked together for the good, and it yeah. worked right out. That's true. And now you're, he's really committed to television. Let me just mention, you see, television was what got my attention about Christian television. Mm -hmm. And television, as an 11-year-old boy, mm -hmm. You saw something on television. Yeah, absolutely. The power yeah. of media. Yeah. yeah. I got a board member, yes, Steve yes. Bike. Yes. Wow. He was the number one tennis player in the state of Pennsylvania, I believe, his senior year of college. He went to uh, Vanderbilt and got a law degree. Wow. His wife was number one female tennis player in, in the state of Pennsylvania her senior year. Went, went to college and got a scholarship. They moved to Central Florida. They started watching the station. And one, one of them got saved under Jimmy Swagger's ministry, and one, the other one got saved under Jim Baker's ministry. And so I realized, I'm looking around, I see people, and you, yes. and myself. That's I heard it. about Christian television right. on a secular station right. when Pat Robinson came on in Orlando. That's right. That's right. And then he went off the air, and I thought, maybe that's a need I can fill. And I went up right. to see him and uh, talked to them, and, and all this came out of mm -hmm. somebody watching a Christian television mm -hmm. program. Yes, so this program power today medium. has got power and potential. Amen. Hey, Heppern, give us a, give us a word that you've been that's been resonated on your heart as far as a message from Scripture. Let me say this also too. When you're talking about Christian television, yeah. Fong's sister was watching me on Christian television on Channel 55, and that's how she got to Jump Ministries. And then it was her sister that brought Fong to Jump. Oh, your sister was watching. Yes, my sister didn't know at that time. She, had, she like I said, she was saved. Beyond, I didn't even know she was saved. <laughs> that's just that's how far apart we were. And yeah, she she saw the program and what they were doing. The street ministries, I think, right. was on years ago. The jump was there, and but then one of her colleagues had invited her to the church. And when she came there, she found out that that was the program that she was watching on 55. So it's so she was watching the station and watching. Uh, yeah. That's <laughs> what happened, right? Yes. That's right. She goes and gets saved, yeah. right? Then she invites you to have no idea what no. You go God and you get saved. all over this. That's, yeah. that's beautiful. That's where it should be. Yeah. Power of media. I, I, just, yeah. I just open this program today reading some of this letters that come in. That's where it works. We all work together. Yeah. And advances the kingdom of God. And so today, what's your word? And then we'll get to the I, I'm just gonna, I just want to say one word, really, just a, a word of encouragement to the mothers and all of those that's, that's at home right now with this pandemic quarantine time, because I'm, I'm dealing with all the ladies, all the mothers at home working and then shifting. That's never been a teacher before. That's never been a principal before. And all of a sudden, in, in less than a week, we've now had to put on like hundreds of hats in such a short period of time. And I'm dealing with a lot of women that are dealing with a lot of, you know, discouragement, this weight you know, and, and, and entering a, a sense of dep a depression, you know, because you're at home 24-7 with your children. You're either, you know, single mother or, you know, families. Everyone is now with you. So I just shared over Mother's Day, and this is just what God has really just allowed me to just meditate on in this season as a woman, and, you know, many women out there as a mother as well, and teachers also. And, and he said, you know, just, just in this season, just stay in this book of Philippians. And it's Philippians 4, chapter 4, 6 through 8. And it's really, uh, I'm going to skim through it. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known to God and the peace of God, which is where I'm living right now, because every day God, I'm just, Lord, I need your peace because your peace surpasses all understanding. Because right now we have there's, there's just no answer to a lot of questions right now. So we need God's, God's peace, peace right yes. now because to surpass all of our understanding, guarding your heart, your mind. But here's the, what I share with them. These are the things we just have to try so much because I shared recently, we live in a time of a generation of social media. 
if there's if there's anything you know, it's social media. And yes. I said with them, if I turn on my phone, all I see are TikTok videos. And those are just, that's all we do in our spare time because celebrities are doing it. There's nothing else they're doing. They're at home and they're basing their validation on what so the perception of what social media is presenting to them. And m media right now, what we're doing is amazing because we have to, you know, s put out a positive message of what life. Life, what do we validate? Not based on what social media, but a positive social, me right. social media um, platform. And so he said, meditate on these things and, and eight. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, good, of good report. You know, all we see right now in the news is, is negative and it's hard. Not everybody has a strong hold of faith to really understand how do I hold on to receive all this bad news? What future do I have, you know? And if there's any virtue, any of these things, praiseworthy, meditate on these things. So I just want to encourage, you know, those at home right now, the moms at home and the wives at home, just hold on. You're not alone. You're not going crazy by yourself. You're not the only one that, that is trying to manage your children and, and, and a job and cooking and cleaning and the cafeteria lady, the principal lady, and the, and the fathers too. <laughs> You know, be encouraged in that. You're doing a great job. You're not supposed to know the answer to all this, but hold on and meditate on those things. You know, when God, you know, it looks this way, but God still, there's a hope, there's a future that we're working towards. So that's just an encouragement I want to leave for the people right now. Amen. Amen. Preach to us. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was, I, was, I was sharing with the people, you know, the Bible says that, we walk by faith and not by sight. A lot is happening and a lot of people are afraid. And when you think about fear, fear what combats fear? Faith. But faith operates by love. Yes. A lot of people are wondering, what are we going to do? And, and their doctors are saying how people's hearts are feeling and because of fear. And we were talking about being the last days and a lot of things that are happening. You asked me about what Romans 8 and 19 means. Yes. And we talked about how creation waits in eager expectation, creation. I think a lot of things we see happening in the world is, is because of what's happening in the world with men straying away from God, God not being the center, God not being the focus. And I believe that God has allowed this, not that he's done it, but I believe that God has allowed it to stop, to make us pause. It's a virus. And anytime something they were saying, a computer gets a virus, everything stops. Yes. God has sat us down almost to get our attention, to cause us to refocus, to recognize that nothing matters. All the money, all the success, everybody is at home right now, having to come and sit down and just really see what's important, family. Get back to basics. The foundation is God. And I believe that this is a time where God is speaking to the entire world to begin to refocus, make sure that he's the, the center good. of our lives. And I believe that one of the things that is going to combat and keep us strong in this hour is walking in faith. Christ said, when I return, will I find faith, faith. in the earth? He said, when I return, will I find faith in the earth? If we can't see this virus, you can't see faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. The way that we stand against this is faith and the way that we break fear is love. So two things are riding. I always say this, you got corona riding and you got fear in the atmosphere. <laughs> and the two things that big beats corona and fear is faith and love. Come on. Yes. So we got to be, the Bible says, and you know there's a scripture that tells us, as children of, day, of the day, let us put on faith and let us put on love as children yeah. that belong to the day. We belong to God. So we are, we have our weapon. It doesn't mean that we're not concerned, but yeah. it doesn't mean that we don't take the, the necessary protocol to take care of ourselves but we understand we walk by the principle of faith we walk by love and that the demand is on God to protect us the demand is on God to make sure that we are safe I wish we had brought a um, uh, the map of Florida they had all the hot spots where all the the hot spot is in central Florida do you know that on that there's the map that the hot spot for where we are located, there is no red. It's the only white area where there's no red, where we're serving the food from, <laughs> the heart of the city. I'm like, we looked at it, someone brought it to our attention, and we looked at it, they say, do you know where the church is located? There is no red, it's the only oh, wow. clear spot on the map. Yeah. We walk by faith and not by sight. There's no way we could take care of God's business That's and right. God not take care of ours. <laughs> so we know as we stay in God as believers, as we trust God as believers, that God is going to keep us protected. And of course, if, you, if, if we get sick, we know, hey, 
By his stripes we're healed. So we're combating. We're speaking life. Yes. You said when you saw that storm, you spoke and commanded it to yes. go in another direction. And the storm obeyed. So we know when certain things come on us that we have weapons that we can use to speak in the atmosphere. And this is a spiritual battle. The Bible says that Jesus, even the winds, obey him. So creation is a part of all this. Christ has to be the center. And I believe that God is trying to tell us, hey, refocus, reboot, get back to me and recognize what is important. Everybody's on the same plateau right now. You got the rich, you got yes. the famous, everybody's yeah. at home and have to get back to the foundation, which is Christ. Yeah, we think about it. Um, other than the flood of Noah, not since that flood of Noah in the scripture, can I think of anything that's, that's, um, that's brought the attention of the whole world? That's Young, right. old, poor, rich, that's right. in between. This is invisible. It has an element of fear with it, That's unknown. Right. That's right. Concern. Yes. And um, of course, it dominates the news. And so there's more to it than meets the eye here. Absolutely. But you're absolutely right. It's amazing. So in the area where your church is located, no, downtown. No, I will no, just white. Every place that you have the hot spots with the red. And where we're located, the 32804 zip code is yes. clear. Praise God. That's grace. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, give us the word. Talk about the children of God, the earth groaning out. What yes, I, when it says creation waits in eager expectation, people are hurting. People are looking for answers. People are looking to, what do I do? Where's a safe place? How, how do we survive this? Is, is something going to happen to me? The, the, when we say creation, it causes us to recognize that there's something bigger than corona. There's something bigger than the things that the world would throw at us or the world would bring unexpected occurrences. None of us entered into 2020 expecting a coronavirus. I call it Rona. None of us expected Rona. But God knew and he foresaw. An example that he foresaw was we were preparing for the hurricane. As we were preparing for the hurricane, God, we got the, the warehouse on the side of us, about probably over 8,000 square feet or more, almost 10,000, loaded up with supplies. But God was preparing us for one thing. But he said, you see how you're preparing for this? There's something also coming. Now we're able to feed the community. Praise it's God. almost like God, he, he knows. And that's the, the thing about be, having your confidence in God. No matter what happens, he goes ahead of us. And he prepares the way. And we, when you have your confidence in God, you know that he has you. And God has proven that he has us. We have not missed a beat. That's on the favor of God. <laughs> Most churches are closed down and, and, and are buckling down. Where God said, told us, feed the community. Yeah. And we've fed over 10,000 persons. Meals. We've taken our five loaves yeah. and two fish and fed over 10,000 meals yeah, and counting. If you're faithful over a few things, God will make you rule over much. And we, we were not just saying that. We're experiencing that. Yeah, yeah. And again, let me put it. Some information on the screen. Uh, the program produced from the uh, Jump Ministry Global Church is aired here on the station, and uh, quite often, and I, you know, this this guy never he, he never backs up. <laughs> they don't back up. They they might add another time slot. You know, but let's put it back on the screen. I'm just I'm just so impressed that this this uh, this couple, this man, this ministry, downtown Orlando, right in the the center of Orlando, has been uh, you know not only surviving but thriving. Uh, these years and they're on Sunday at 3 p.m. and Friday at 8.30 and Saturday, uh, <laughs> at Monday at 2 a.m. Yes. an extra time or two here and there. Your production quality is increased. Yes, God. You have a good yes, team God. and right. God has added to your church some yes. well-known yes, NBA that's right. player. Yes, Tell us about God, that. Jonathan Isaacs is a part of the congregation. I met Jonathan Isaacs and, and God allowed me to lead him to the Lord, to bring him into the place. He thought he knew the Lord, but he, he, he came in and we started a meeting. He didn't know I was a pastor. He, he told me one day he wanted to go feed the community. And when he wanted to go feed the community, I said, what are you going to feed the community? He said, I'm going to drive around in the bus and give them hamburgers and hot dogs. I said, hamburgers and hot dogs? I said, if you're going to feed people, let me show you how to feed people. That's what I do. <laughs> but he didn't know. And he, went, he took me to the store. And he bought all the supplies, and the people in my church cooked the supplies. And he came down and served the food. And when he saw what we did, at the time he had hurt his ankle. And when he saw what we did, he was like, 
He was amazed. And I took him inside the church. He still didn't know I was the pastor. I prayed over his ankle. And then I said, come meet the pastor on a Sunday. When he came and he saw, he said, you're the pastor. <laughs> <laughs> he was shocked. And he's just been coming ever since and growing. He's also traveled with us to feed the nations. Mm -hmm. To Trinidad, so he's seen what the ministry is doing, and he's hands-on. He's really been such uh, it's such been such a delight to see him grow and fall in love with God. It's almost three years now. How did you and Jonathan come together? We uh, I saw him one day, believe it or not. Uh, when I said, saw him, he said he's him. about seven feet. Yeah. And I saw him. When I saw him, I said I could tell you how to be great. Okay. Where did where did you see it? Coming off the elevator. Okay. And I just said, he's coming off the elevator. I was going on the elevator. It was downtown, and he was going on. And I said, I didn't know who he was. And I said, I could tell you how to be great. And he said, tell me. I said, you got to know Jesus. And he said, he said, he said I know Jesus. But he was just trying to blow me off. And we kept running into each other. And when we kept running into each other, he finally said, God must be want me to know this man. <laughs> And that's how it happened. Does it, did he come from a Christian background? Yes, he came from a Christian background. His father and his mother, yeah, they invested I, in his life, so he came from that background, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And so you met him in the elevator? I met him in the elevator. Kept running into him and yeah. after the elevator. And after I said that, and, 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 we just came, and then the feeding thing happened where he wanted to feed the community. And I told him, if you're going to do it, let's do it right. And God just began to allow us to grow from there. Yeah, that seems to have been, you know, I was thinking about when you first moved here and I first met you, you know, you'd have people saved and you would take them over to Daytona Beach. Yes, that's right. right. And have baptism. We still do. So you still do we that? We still take yeah. them into Tell the ocean and that. baptize them. What we do is when we, you know, I, we, we take them to the ocean of New Smyrna Beach. We take about 50 to 60 persons and we go and we walk and we took Jonathan in the water <laughs> and, and, and we baptize him in New Smyrna Beach yeah. early in the morning about 6 o'clock and uh, we just, just have a good oh, time nice. celebrating God. Yeah. And baptizing Beautiful. persons in the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> Jump Ministries Global Church, downtown Orlando. And uh, look them up on the website. They got so many things going on that's good and uh, worthwhile. And God is blessing. And it's just a great connection. And again, I just think about you. You never, never stop and you never back up. No, you can't. No, but no. we call the Bible says the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violent taken it by force. What do you mean by, by violence? I did. Just like the enemy, just attacking, just the enemy trying to stop the movement of God or the moment, momentum of God, trying to fight the finances, trying to divide. But those of us that stay on our knees, those of us that stay fasting in prayer, we're seeing God prevail. You talked about how creation, a lot of the kids that we feed, they're, they're saying they can't wait for us to come. They're, they're now wanting to hear about Jesus, wanting to learn more about Jesus. Creation is waiting in eager expectation. So when they begin to see Christ demonstrated in love, it causes Christ to become alive. You know, I do, just one thing I'd really like, I'd really like, I'll tell you in just a moment, right? <laughs> I just realized, Steve, you know, we're talking about Christian television and his influence. You worked at CBN. Yeah, at the same time that you came up there for one of the telethons, we think, yeah. in CBN. the mid-70s, 76, 77, 70, 89. Yeah. And that's when I and saw the program. And there was a program on CBN named Ross Bagley. Ross Bagley. Ross Bagley, Ross Bagley. Ross Bagley was a music DJ basically on television. Before you know? MTV, yeah, you know. But, yeah, and then there was a program that had a white piano and a Church of God uh, minister and songwriter and great musician sit at the piano <laughs> and just played <laughs> I don't know and that. talked and ministered. And that's where the white piano came from. <laughs> wow. And Angela does has done Power of Praise Power program, my praise. daughter. Yes, yes. Probably yes. over 500 oh, programs yes. in her life around the piano. And now she's got a piano in her home in Scotland, <laughs> and she's doing programs over there. We're awesome. getting ready to start airing them. Awesome. But I think about the influence of Christian television. Oh, man. Powerful. Pioneers, Powerful. Pioneers of those days, you yeah. know. So you were there at CBN. Yep, Virginia Beach. Yeah. And they, and they had a very small studio, wasn't large at all, you know. And your sister saw this pastor on this station. On this station. And invited and you to go with her somewhere. Years later, right? somehow I got to the page. How, how, how many services did you go to there before you received the Lord? Um, within that year, I think I attended in August. Yeah. And within that, I would say three months. God was really working my heart within three months. And it was just boom, boom, boom. One day they did an altar call. My sister's like, just go. I don't even know what I was going to say. She's like, just go. But just that fiery feeling I had, and she just pushed me out of the chair, <laughs> the pews there. 
so I just walked up in the middle and then someone just grabbed my hand and it just happened so natural too I think when God when it's your time and God is calling you and you just allow the spirit of God to move there, there there's that's it that's that's the moment right there and that's what happened for me and I just went it wasn't perfect it wasn't like you know you went up there you, you know everything was just changed immediately but something in me just tapped in the spirit of God took over and I it was that peace that he gave me and I still have that peace with me that I still remind myself to make sure I still have that peace that surpasses all understanding because so many things that you just try to figure out you can't but when I went up there at the altar call they grabbed my hand and prayed for me just repeating the, the, the prayer and just going back to my seat I went home that day I was driving and I said what is this feeling I have in my stomach what is this just feeling I have it's just such a peace like everything every concern I had before that questions of a relationship of what's real and what's not it just and she got baptized in New Smyrna Beach. And yes. <laughs> in the water. And yes. In the Mind ocean. you, I, I didn't grow up in too. Christianity. I've never been to church. So everything I experienced about Christianity and church, period, was through <laughs> my time at Jump Ministries. And I always tell the people to this day that never stop displaying your love. And you talked about love. It's we'll God, faith, faith, and love. Mm -hmm. My nickname in the past is fear. I battle with a spirit of strong Aww. fear. And she married faith. And I married Faith. <laughs> it, you know, unfortunately, it's the truth. You know, growing up, you know, it was a difficult time growing up, you know, foreign country, you know, dealing with so many things. But I battled with a strong spirit of fear. But when I came to the church, I've always shared with them to this day, all the ministers, all the worshipers, all the dancers, all the ushers. I said, what you all did for me and I know for everybody else that came after me is your love. Don't ever stop displaying the love of God, not your love, but the love of God in you to the people that are coming in. Because it was your love that drew me, that allowed me to feel this is where I need to be. This is the house, this peace. You know, they're not my family. They don't look like me. This place is not where I'm used to, but it was their love and it was God's love through them. And of course, faith, the teaching of faith when the pastor came. It was just everything meshed together and came. And I just like, I just, I want it more. And that's how I just continue growing. And that's, that's such a and powerful growing, and growing. Yeah. <laughs> so powerful, so wonderful. <laughs> I, I uh, uh, with, uh, would you stand? Could we stand up <laughs> again? Come on. Okay. Okay. I want. I'd like for you to preach ten minutes here from this piano. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we'll be your amen corner over there. We'll be my right? amen yeah. corner. <laughs> okay. Because oh you're you're a special <laughs> man. I, I mean, he don't quit. No. And he's 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 there through thick and thin. He's getting. He's just got his nice jacket on here. Come I'm on. Just, I'm just so happy. I, mean, I saw you, man. I, I went yes. to your church. You had me speak for you yes. on Sunday morning. And, and I realized this guy, he doesn't quit. No, he doesn't. So, he doesn't. And people respond. Yes. So I'm just, uh, you know, th this is downtown Orlando, right? Yes. Come on. Uh, you know, right there at uh, where the police, uh, the sheriff's department. The sheriff's station, that's right, right yeah. in the heart of the city. So, on the map, it's the heart of the city. Yeah. It's the heart of the city. It's the heart no, of the city. No, no accident. No accident. God yeah. knows exactly yeah. what he's doing. Yeah. Okay, deliver a word. I'll let <laughs> you know when the clock's up. All right. God is so powerful. You Stay know, right God there. spoke to me. And I always thought I knew faith. I always thought I understood what faith was. <laughs> and God had to speak to me and show me that there was Hallelujah. another element, another level of faith. Yes. And I thought that faith was just believing. If I just believed strong enough, if I fast enough, that that was what faith was. But God had to speak to me and say, Duran, you're missing what faith was. I was invited to Africa. And when I was invited to Africa, we had gotten our visas. We were trying to get visas to go to Nigeria, Africa. And we, I had sent one of my ministers to go and get the visas, and he went to Washington. And all the visas were denied. Denied after we had spent all the money for the tickets, over $20,000. So I said, God, what are we going to do? So the Lord had to begin to speak to me. And what the Lord began to show me was, the Lord says, read James chapter 2. And I said, God, and I begin to read. And I was, I was reading. It started to say, if a rich person comes into the room and be in respect of persons, and I begin to ask the Holy Spirit, who am I being respecter of? And then the Holy Spirit began to say, read on, line by line, precept upon precept. And it says, faith without works is dead. So I said, God, what are you saying? He said, did you purchase the tickets to New York City? Remember now, the person who I was dealing with, they went to Washington. And he, I said, yes. He said, you have to jump on the airplane. 
even though they said no in Washington and act as if it's already happening. So I did what the Lord said. We went with the date with the tickets, even though we got a no. We got to New York. There was a sign in New York says this process takes three days. So in the law of the land said the process takes three days. But in the embassy, when we got there, I said, I said to him, anytime that someone speaks unbelief, you must learn to speak back. I spoke yes. back and I say, watch God perform this miracle today. When he exactly. said, can't you read? Because the process, it took three days. We went inside that embassy. By three o'clock, we had all our visas to go to Africa. Come on. Now, remember, the process took three days. So the laws of God are different from the laws of the land. Yeah. God can break laws. We got to understand he governs the land. He is yes. the Lord yes. of all. So he taught me it's not just about fasting. As believers, we fast, we pray, but we don't move in faith. When you move in faith, put action behind what you believe. So even though you may not see it, even though that there may not be the support, as you move in faith, God will take care of yes, the rest. Yes. You know, when we were about to add to get the space that we needed to put all the supplies, when we were going to get the supplies, the room for the supplies, I started to think to myself, Duran, you're getting extra costs. How are you going to pay for the extra cost? But would you believe that God knew that we would need the space because he knew the hurricane was yeah. coming? Yeah. Sure. So I got the space yeah. and God, is, we have not missed the beat for the rent. When God moved and I trusted him, yeah. now he gave us the room and we were able to put all the supplies in the room. When you move, God will move just like that. And I believe that God is speaking to someone and he's telling you to move. He may be telling you to call the prayer line, but you're sitting and you're saying, God, I'm waiting for an answer. Pick up the line and call. Yes. You have to give God something to to work with Come not on. just saying I'm praying not just saying man I enjoy 55 grab that phone yeah. someone is waiting at the end of that line and if God impress you to sow into 55 so because you got to sow in where you got where you want to go if you want something good to happen for you you got to make something good happen for somebody else and God will cause it to continue to flow remember the woman with the barrel when she took care of Elijah the Bible says her barrel never ran empty hey. you got to give God something to work with and then God will begin to perform miracles on the inside of your life. And I just thank God for Channel 55 and the work that they do in Central Florida. Mr. Bowers is bringing persons on here, but he's an incredible man, his family, and the work they're doing, you want to support yes. the Majesty Billing so he could continue to do what he's doing for Central Florida and people all over the state of Florida can be blessed through this ministry. Seed, time, and harvest. He will eternally reap for what he's doing with Channel 55. God bless you. This is just so good. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is just so good. You know what? I'm going to put faith and love here together, okay? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, first of all, I love you guys. I mean, you, you, you made this this uh, hurricane of good right here. Oh and you and you just ah. you merged together. And I, was, oh, I, was, I mean, you guys have been down. You've been up. Yeah, You're yeah, just yeah, strong. Yeah. You take 60 people at daylight on a... Uh, uh, to a baptism of service yes. in the in the ocean. In the ocean, that's yeah, right. Including the seven foot <laughs> pro <Yeah>. basketball player. <laughs> you he ran take, in the ocean. Yeah, take yeah. him out of that. Yeah, yeah, take him out of that. Take him out of the deep. Yeah. I mean, you just you just got it. Yeah, I give God the glory. And I, I, I see you prosper in every way, and yes. you're a strong priest of the home and everything. But you know, I feel impressed. To ask you, is it all right? Yes, go ahead. To ahead. reach your hands yes. toward the camera and to pray for people who really can receive your prayer and minister to them. Just take a couple minutes, please. Yes. And, and just stretch forth your hand. Just come in tight. I just believe it's, put your hands up against the TV screen if you feel like it. Yes. This is such something I've stood over there and I, I tried to ignore. I can't do that. Uh it's an honor and a privilege. Well, right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, right now, God, you're watching this program right now. And it's not by chance you're watching this. You just heard sharing of so many powerful testimonies of how the, the power of television. It's not by chance God created this. You know, we, we take things by force right now. And that's what we're doing. We are praying for you. In the sound of my voice, I am praying for you. Or we are praying for you. In this pandemic, God is still real. So right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, we are touching those who are watching right now, God. Yes, God, in Jesus. While they're sitting there, God, they're believing for healings to take place, yes. God. Healings for the loved ones. Right now, with distance, oh God, we cannot be near the loved one, God, but our prayer, God, is we are not distanced from you in this time, God. Yes. We may be distanced from others, God, but you are not a distant God right now, Lord. So we are praying, we are praying for the power of Jesus Christ, the blood of Christ right now, to touch every single person, every life, every mother, every father, every grandfather, every single child, oh God, 
that is in need right now, God, that is wondering, Lord, how is this going to happen, God? What's going to happen tomorrow, this summer? Where's my children going to go? What is going to happen with school, God? Where, where are my jobs? Is it going to come back? Is it not going to come back, God? All these questions, oh God, that we are asking ourselves what to do, God. But Lord, we are leaving it at your footstep In right now. In the name now. of Jesus, God. We are leaving every cares, every concern, every worries. Lord, our future belongs to you. So right now, I am praying for the peace, peace of yes, God. God. We release it now. We are releasing it right now In to every single Jesus, mother, yes, every God. father, every single mother yes, right now, yes. God that is trying to figure this out. We're releasing your peace that in surpasses Jesus. all understanding, God. Your healing to touch them right now, Lord, and your love and faith to take over every spirit of fear to be broken right now in the name of Jesus, no God. So in good. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Pastor, invite our viewers to your church. Yes, yes, Tell them yes. how to get there when to come. Listen, we have services every Sunday at 11 o'clock. Tuesday night Bible study begins at 7 o'clock and Fridays at 7 p.m. On Tuesdays, you get to ask questions up close and personal. So everything that's being taught, you will love visiting Jump Ministry. So we want yeah. you, if you're not in a local church, man, get plugged in. The Bible says, forsake not the assemblies of yourself together, even so much more as you see the day approaching. And if you're, if you're looking for a pastor, a local church, um, I just encourage you to, to visit Jump Ministries Church in downtown Orlando. Yes, this, yes. this couple does an incredible work. They've been there for years. Yes, that's right. And they've got children now, two yes. children, and uh, God's blessed them, and yes. they just keep pressing forward. they got their own television studio, and their own social media, and their own channel 55.10. They're that's on right. four times a week here on the Super Channel. They're in Gainesville now on our station there and one in Tampa and they just keep pushing. That's right. And they got the joy of the Lord and they good, look younger all the time. Yes, you You're looking for a church home. Hey, this is uh, this is just an invitation that's here. That's right. It's an encounter today. Amen. Thank you. Hand me that those envelopes over there. Yes, 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 yes. yes, 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 yes. Some envelopes. Yeah. I've started off this program. I just felt impressed to do something old fashioned, which was just to just read some cities and to thank our partners, okay? Yes. Yes. And as I've said around today, Steve Ingram. Yes. Your sister, you. Yes. You. Yes. Me. Our media. Yep. Saved through Christian television. Hallelujah. Right. So your gifts are a blessing. So support Super Channel. Support this local church. It's great to have you today. Yes, thank, thank you for having us. us. Looking good. Thank you for having us. Man, I have a great respect for this company. <laughs> oh, boy. God bless you. See you next time. We love you. Bye-bye for now.